Hi everybody, welcome to my channel Frugalissima, my name's Sam, this is where I talk about all things sewing and today's video is a quick recap of all the things that I've made during the um, spring and summer this year. First of all I'd just like to say thank you so much to everybody who uh, has made nice kind comments on my last video on my uh, long anticipated return to YouTubing. Uh, that's been lovely, thank you so much and to anybody who has contributed to my coffee account as well that's very very much appreciated, thank you so much. I didn't think I'd actually made um, a great deal over the summer but when I've gone back and looked there's quite a lot so I'm going to break it down into two videos uh, I'm going to do what I've done in the spring and summer and then I'm going to go and do another one of, of what I've done sort of maybe August August onwards so that will be like uh, in a couple of weeks time um, and that'll be more of my autumn makes so the last time I shared shared my makes here um, I think it was um, the Erin Dungarees from Sir Tilly and the Buttons and then the So Frugal makes that we made uh, during the month of March. So it has been quite a long time um, coming. So yeah, um, and if you remember, if you think back to that one, if you can remember, I made the Etty camisole during the um, So Frugal challenge. And I said on the video then that I thought that perhaps it would make um, a good reversible top. And also that I would like to have a go at widening the straps so that's the first show, first thing that I'm going to show you today. That's down here, just a second. I did do both. So I had a bit of fun with this, this little camisole actually. Um, as you can see, it's all pinned and that's, I'll tell you about that later. Um, but yeah, I widened the straps. So I think the original strap, straps will have been about half that width. And all I've done to widen it is just made this little bit wider here. So I've redrafted it put uh, another sort of quarter of an inch on each side, remembering to add seam allowances, obviously. Widen this uh, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, and then, yeah, we've uh, I've just made it a, a wider strap. And then if you just look at the inside, I've made it reversible. And um, I just did that in some leftover cotton shirt and fabrics that I had. Um, I'm not sure how well you can see it, but I've got some photos that I can insert. I've actually unpicked it as well because although it works in principle, the cottons are a little bit heavy, it probably work better with a viscose or something a little bit uh, finer fabrics. So I've, I've actually, I'm in the process of unpicking it, I probably won't do it now because um, I, I think the, the time for wearing a camisole is over. I've got my cardigan on today because it's uh, it's a bit chilly. But yeah, um, I think it works in principle. The edge camisole that Tammy Ann made, it's a free pattern, sorry I forgot to mention that. Um, she has you when it's a facing on it and she set, she has you sew the facing so that you can see the seams so instead of doing that you just um you would just sew the seams all in one one line keep it open like that lengthen the um well you just double double the the outside instead of lengthening the the facing and then just sew it all across and then it's all enclosed and then at the bottom i would just sew at the bottom like that uh, just at the bottom, just making sure that those hems match. So yeah, quite a simple hack, uh, both of them. And then I went on to playing about with it a little bit more and I wanted to make it, uh, just extend it into a dress. So I just experimented with a, an old duvet cover and you can't probably see it there, but I'll put insert, insert some pictures, but what you can will be able to see is that I put some slits at the side so this was just an experiment to see if it would work with this old duvet cover and it does it works really nicely you could put pockets in it i actually changed the straps i kept the widened straps but changed them to tie at the top saves faffing about trying to um you know to get to adjust it to get it to the right length so i did that i kind of based it on the salt water slip a little bit inspired by the salt water slip so i just extended it from the bottom didn't bring it out quite so airline. I brought it in a little bit and measured where I wanted to bring it, um, what length I wanted it, and uh, yeah, just uh, just did it that way. Really, really e easy to do. Um, but if you want me to put together a video, it'll be summer now. Next summer, I would have thought. Cause I can't imagine anybody in this in the northern hemisphere wanting to do that. But yeah, I can I can do that. It's uh, it's quite a, quite an easy hack. So I had quite a bit of fun messing about playing with that with that little pattern and uh, like I say it's a free free pattern by Tammy Handmade 
So I've made quite a few things during the summer as well, quite random things seemingly, but I thought I'd just quickly mention them. Uh, one of them was for my mum and a friend. They are in the D Women's Institute, the WI, and they usually put a little comedy sketch on for, for, a, for the group every year. I don't really know why, but they, they just like doing it. Um, and they wanted to do the Two Ronnies for Candles sketch. I'm not sure if anybody's heard about it outside of UK. It's very UK centric as this. I apologise to the international viewers. I'll put a link to the, the video on, on YouTube. It is quite funny. And they wanted to, she, so she wanted like a, an overall basically making. And I just said, to, I explained to her, I said, look, I can make it for you, but it's going to cost me 10 to 15 pound in fabric, you know. Anyway, next thing I know, she turns up with a, an old duvet cover. Can you make it out of this? So I did. I used the um, Paola um, jacket. It's like a work wear char jacket. I've made it before. I used that as a pattern and just adapted it ever so slightly so that it didn't, it, uh, I think it, they needed a lapel on it and there's no lapel on that. It's just, it buttons right up to the to the throat. So yeah, I used that and uh, just some old buttons that I had kicking about. So it's, it, you know, she wanted it to look quite worn and rustic. So I just did odd buttons on it and what have you. The, I will show the photographs as I'm speaking now of, of them. They're both crackers, absolutely crackers. <laughs> Uh, Mum came back then and said, have you got any fur so I can make myself some sideburns and have you got something that I can put on my trousers so I can make some patches? So I helped her with that as well and she uh, cut up an old jumper. So the, if you're looking at it, the woman on the right with the sideburns, that's my mum and the woman on the left is a friend Bronwyn who I made the jacket for. And I think I put Made in Yorkshire, I think I put a little label inside or something like that. I can't remember what I did now, so so long ago. But yeah, that, that was one random make for other people. The other random make was for my pal who is involved with Amateur Dramatics and she was doing the um, musical Legally Blonde. And there's two little dogs in it. I've never seen this film. Um, there's two little dogs in it. She got two little chihuahuas and apparently there's a scene where they're all wearing sequins. I don't even know if it's true to the film or not. Anyway, she wanted these dog coats covering, covering in, in a sequin so that it matched the outfit of the actresses. Sequins. If you've ever sewn with sequins, never again. My goodness me. I think she bought an, like a, something for table decoration. So it was quite a big piece. She bought it and I just did the covering. And uh, yeah, so that that was quite a cute one. And it turned out okay, actually, because um, Crystal, um, who is uh, my social thread, and Adele, who is Sofa Serenity, they were running a little competition for uh, during that month, sewing for others or something like that. So I entered it into that and I won a voucher for So Essential. So that worked out okay. But yeah, I, I don't think I'll be sewing with uh, sequins any time soon again. The, I'm still finding them <laughs> to this day. <laughs> it wasn't a great experience. But all I did was use the existing dot coat as a template and cut round it. Obviously, I didn't seam around. So then I just bound all the way around it to hold it on. I mean, it was never going to be a, a project that was to have any kind of longevity. It just needed to, to work for the show. But obviously, it needed a, a certain amount of strength so that the poor little dogs... Uh, were, were okay uh, during <coughs> during the shows. So yeah, that turned out okay. Um, and then another one my mum's involved in, and that was uh, a donkey. <laughs> I told you they were random. I don't know if I mentioned it prior, previously, but there's a video on YouTube where a grandma's reading the story Wonky Donkey to her granddaughter, and it's a Scottish grandmother. I will link that video below. It's absolutely hilarious. And I thought that was fantastic. And at Christmas, I decided not to send out Christmas cards. I wanted to donate money to the donkey sanctuary. And then I bought my mum the wonky donkey book and I made her a little donkey. And the donkey, the wonky donkey story is that it's got one eye and its leg falls off and blah, 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 hence the wonky donkey. So I made my mum at Christmas one of these wonky donkeys so she could sit with the grandchildren and read the story. And uh, yeah, she, she absolutely loved it. And as did her friend. <laughs> so. She just said, would Sam make me one of these donkeys and I'll get, you know, she was going to get the book. So I made another donkey. 
Now, the, uh, my history with donkeys is that I was brought up on a farm as a child and I had two donkeys actually growing up. So I'll, I'll insert a photograph of me as a young girl uh, with my donkey, Dandy. And yeah, it, it, that was good fun making it. I mean, a bit fiddly. I used a free pattern that I found. If I can find the, the link to it, I'll, I'll link that below. And just used, um, it was like a mole skin that I used and then just some pink flannel in the ears. So it didn't, I didn't adapt the pattern. I just made it, you know, just made it as it is. But when you look at the pattern, it's quite a different looking pattern to, to what the donkey is that I made. So that was that. Sorry, we had somebody delivering a skip outside. So I've just cut the video. <laughs> so one last uh, thing that I made for somebody else. And that was for my husband. I don't often make him anything. Um, but I think I'm, I think I'm probably made it for that competition that I was saying about uh, on Instagram uh, run by Crystal and, and Adele. Um, but I don't, I don't think I got it finished in time for that. I got it finished uh, probably beginning of May. And that was the Draper polo shirt by made uh, wardrobe by me. One of the first patterns I've ever sewn by them. And it was some black, um, just a black fabric that I had in my stash. I've just got it here. So if I hold it up here, you'll probably be able to see it. And it's just a simple polo shirt with the two buttons at the placket here. Your, pol your typical polo neck, um, polo collar, short sleeved. I think there is a long sleeve version. And then you've got a little vent, vent at the side. And I've stuck a little uh, contains dog hairs on the, uh, on the side there for him. He's worn it once. <laughs> yeah, bless him. Um, yeah, I think he's worn it once and then it's, it's, it, is, it is hung up in his wardrobe, but it doesn't look like it's been ironed, but um, I'm sure I did. Anyway, um, yeah, relatively simple thing to sew is that I made an extra large for him and I think that's because the sizing for that goes for uh, teens. It's quite a good, good wide size range. I think it goes up to five extra large. Uh, so I made him a, an extra large. It's a pretty standard size. He usually wears a medium in uh, ready to wear, but quite tall. Uh, but I didn't make any adjustments to the, the fit and it fits him absolutely perfectly. Easy, easy enough to sew, but there is a, a supporting video for that one uh, if anybody's interested in, in making something like that. And the uh, jersey, I don't know if you can appreciate the, the texture on it. It's almost like an Airtex. It's a cotton. Um, and that uh, was a moustache. I bought it to make a rugby shirt for my son that I never got around to. So it won't be having that now. <laughs> That, that would be a good one actually to make as a gift for someone and just a quick heads up that um, Alison, so like Dottie and Adam, who is Adam Sews on, um, on YouTube, both of them on YouTube, are going to be doing a little challenge during the month of November making gifts for people so that would be a good one. So that was it for sewing for other people. I do have another one that I'll talk about later. Um, but I did actually do some pattern testing during the summer for Winter Wire Designs, Suzanne Winter. I've done a bit of pattern testing for her in the past and she did support us with So Frugal as well. Um, she made the, uh, she designed the Slim Fit Joggers, which I, I made. And um, yeah, it's got some really interesting details on this. It's got the seam line down the front, which, uh, and then it's got these slanted pockets and a bit like the Pietra pants in a way. And they are designed for knit fabrics, uh, lots of different uh, leg lengths. And I think there's three hen bands that you can do, not hem bands, waistbands. Uh, you can have a curved waistband, a straight waistband, and then you can have the drawstring waistband. And then with the leg lengths, you can go capri, full length. I think she might have done a, a shorts version as well. And then you can put cuffs on it or not, depending on what you want to do. So for the first pair, when I was testing, I just did a, a straight, uh, a, a normal straight length, length no, cuff, no cuffs. Um, and no messing about with it. I just wanted to test it for size. It did turn out actually a little bit big. Uh, so I went down a size for, for mine. And subsequently, actually, I've gone back in because I've lost a bit of weight. I've actually put some elastic in that waistband and that's worked out fine. I, I would actually, if I were making them again, size down. It goes from a 24 inch waist up to a 56 inch waist and the maximum hip of 63 inch does it do these joggers. So they're quite quite a good one. Did make um, the Capri length, the second version, the Capri length in the green and did a little contrast at the pockets. Uh, 
I don't, I don't find I reach for those as much. I thought I might wear them for jogging, um, but I, I, I think I, the the ponte that I've used is a little bit heavy for, for jogging in. But I made a little vest, and that is a winter wear patterns vest as well, the V-neck vest. I think it's called the Trendy Tank. That's a winter wear pattern that's free if you join up to her Facebook page and that's a lovely little tank it's got again some nice details it's got like a an optional shirt back or curved hem at the back i miss that out um but yeah it's that's a nice little v-neck and if you want a tutorial on how to do a v-neck i've got a tutorial on my youtube channel which i'll link to at the end for you so as i was thinking about holiday sewing um there is another winter wear pattern that I had a go, which I wasn't quite as successful with, and that is her uh, romper. It's the Riviera romper, and that's not the pattern. That was just, uh, I think it was just the wrong fabric. So I use the same fabric as I use for the, the vest top. Uh, I've not brought them with me, but I'll, I'll insert pictures. Um, but I can't insert pictures of the romper that I made because I can, I've not finished it. Um, so... I think it is the, the fabric that's wrong with it, but also I made it with a cap sleeve, that's right. I made it with a cap sleeve and it's got an option to have it sleeveless. And when I put the cap sleeve on, it cut me right across there um, and then came across. I don't know, it just seemed it was too much fabric all, all the way down there for me. I like the back detail. It's got a really sort of um, like a, an exaggerated keyhole back with a tie detail on it. I like the back, um, but I think if I was to make it again, I'd put a scoop on it probably not as deep as this scoop that I'm wearing now but uh, I'd probably scoop it out a bit it just seemed a bit too high up for me so that's not gone in the that's gone on the naughty pile until next year <laughs> so I think it's good to talk about things that don't work out well and um, I'm going to talk about another one as well uh, because it, it that that was not the pattern that was just wrong choice of fabric and design for me for my um, particular needs I think so I will have another go at that later. That is designed for um, knit fabrics, but you can put woven at the bottom, which I thought was interesting. So she has some nice features, does Suzanne, on her, her patterns. I've written the sizes, the sizes down for that, but I think it'll be the same as the the joggers. Um, so quite a wide size range on that. I think it'll be 63 inch. If it's not, I'll put something in the in the writing above uh, below. Another unsuccessful make was the Made for Mermaids Amalfi bikini set. Um, this, uh, I, I don't know what it was. It's possibly my choice of fabric, although I did go for a swimwear fabric. Uh, but also in the instructions, there is there was nothing in the instructions to to tell you how much stretch you needed. So I bought the fabric and it's absolutely gorgeous fabric. I'll show you in just a second. So I bought this fabric. And it's in bits now because I've unpicked it because it didn't fit. But this is the bottoms uh, from Minerva. And they gave all your stretch. It, it gave it swimwear as a suggestion as well as active wear. Um, but on the Mermaid, Made for Mermaids website, there was no, I couldn't find it. If, if it was there, I couldn't find it on the instructions of how um, much stretch you needed. Now this pattern, it's rever fully reversible, so it's fully lined. The bikini part of it is in two parts, so you kind of put, it's a bit weird. You put uh, one bit on and then the other bit on, and you're supposed to be able to mix and match it, so like your lining is the reversible bit, but the front's the same as the back. There's no shaping for your bust ball. I don't know about you, but I'm a bit, a bit of a different shape at the front as I am at the back. I haven't got as much left as I had before, but I still got something. So I can't understand why there was no shaping. For anybody who's bustier, I, I don't know how it would work. Anyway, when I got it all made up, obviously the day before I was going on holiday, when I got it all made up, um, it was like it was to fit a 12-year-old. I could get it on, but I couldn't breathe. I certainly wouldn't have been able to swim in it. Um, so as you can see, I've started unpicking it. And I thought that it would do for my next holiday because I was home for a week and then went on holiday again. And I just, I was going to put some inserts on the side because this fabric was relatively expensive. I think it was about £20 a metre. I bought 70 centimetres, so I didn't buy enough to remake the whole thing. Uh, so I thought I'd put some like inserts on the on the sides. And I just never, I lost, I lost all... Uh, impetus with it I think <laughs> so I got as, as far as I'm unpicking it and that was it I mean the problem with making swimwear is that you you've 
you really need to twirl it in the same fabric that you're going to make it in. And when it's expensive like that, it's you, you want your twirl to fit ideally. So, you know, it's all right making it in a cheaper fabric, but if the stretch is different, then it's not going to work, is it? So yeah, fell out of love with that one. And it's in the, that's in the naughty pile with the uh, Amalfi romper soup suit until next year. So that's that one. A couple of things that I did make from holidays that turned out a little bit more successful were um, I made the Monica, no, yeah, Monica trapeze dress. So I did twirl this in the same fabric as I made for the Yeti, uh, the duvet. Then I made it in some fabric scraps that I got from previous projects. So I will show you perfect pictures of it, but just as a close up. So you've got the coral at the top and then you've got the pink and I love this one. Yeah, I really do like it. I think I made a size 10 to 12 on this one. This is a free pattern from Fabric Star. So it does go up to a size 20 to 22, but I think the finished bust is 43 and a half inches. It's not, it's not a great size range really on this one, but it is, it's, it's quite fitted around the bust and then it's trapeze, so it's, it's, there's no fitting around the waist and hip. So it's got some nice features as this one. Uh, I actually did the colour blocking. That's not part of the, the pattern. So I actually, split the pattern up and added seam allowances along the back and front yoke there and then at the bottom there as well and then I went for uh, a contrast fabric on the inside of the pockets there made my own bias binding which I flipped flipped the colour so rather than doing the orange I did the the pink and then I did quite a lot of top stitching on this as well so I deliberately split this to do the top stitching down the, the bot down the middle there hopefully you can see that and i did it in the contrast orange although you can't really see that uh, you can see it better the contrast pink across there and then i did the top stitching of the pockets there that is part of the pattern actually to make it look like a, a patch pocket and then you've got the keyhole closure at the back so really simple simple to fit and simple to make i made it more complicated by doing the co uh, color blocking but Loved that one and I wore that on holiday a few times actually, both holidays. So that's the Monica Trapeze dress and like I say, I think I made a size 10 to 12 on that one. I'll put my uh, sizes down below as, as I'm talking about sizes, save, save me having to repeat it every time. Another successful holiday make and this, is, this was a great one that I made from an old shirt. And this is the crease backpack, made this and used it for both holidays. Um, so I actually made made it out of an old shirt and it is uh, designed to be made from an old shirt. Crease is Welsh folk shirt and the digital pattern library, Alexander, who's a designer there, deliberately made it to be made from, a, from an old shirt. So it's, it contains some of the um, original bits and pieces. So we've got the, got the shirt pocket on there which you probably can't see uh, that you use the plackets as your um, your straps at the back and then the collars in there somewhere what do we use oh the collars actually the handle there that's the collar so some really nice design details on that one and I really really enjoyed making it I wouldn't say it was for beginners um, you've got you know you've got flat fell seams in it you've got the eyelets in it which you can put buttonholes there and then I kept the original um, label on there as well. Um, but I liked, I enjoyed making it so much I cut out another one for a for a gift. So that would um, that would qualify hopefully for the gift sewing later this year that Alison and Adam are doing. Another um, upcycle project that I did, and this was for little Alice, my granddaughter, and that was uh, upcycling a shirt into a dress for her. Um, this was a dress by, uh, made by Toya, I think it's called, yeah, made by Toya. And there's only two sizes, but it is a free pattern. So there's an 18 to 20, uh, an 18 to 24 months or two years. Um, and then there's a two years to three years and you can do the dress as a tunic or a dress. Uh, it's just got a little uh, growing on cap sleeves and then a placket down the back. So a really easy make. I made it more difficult by <laughs> by making it out of an old shirt. But I wanted uh, to make something for the Queen's Jubilee this year. Sadly, she's passed away subsequently. But we, you know, in, in the UK, we were all celebrating the Queen's Jubilee. Didn't want to make something 
that was going to only be worn once, if you know what I mean. I just wanted, you know, wanted to get some wear out of it over the summer. So although Alice was only around about 18 months at the time, I did make her the um, two-year-old, two to three-year-old version, actually, and it fit her absolutely fine. So I would say it probably comes up a bit small because although Alice uh, isn't particularly petite, uh, I think she's just average size. I don't think she's particularly big. Um, so she, you know, she's a, she's not a, a, an overly large baby. So I'll, I'll just bear that in mind. Uh, but I will link that below. So yeah, you've got a placket at the back, uh, and instead of putting buttons down there, I just put little uh, snaps on it. Uh, I think it'd be good as a tunic as well if you made it in a corduroy, um, just uh, over the you know over the winter months, and just uh, wore something underneath it. I thought I thought it might I might make it again if I've got some spare corduroy somewhere. So yeah, I seem to have done a lot of upcycles this year. So another two I'll mention very quickly. Uh, the one that I'm wearing now. So um, I'm. I bought a t-shirt from a charity shop during the summer and it was just a big uh, basic uh, t-shirt and I made a promise to myself at the beginning of the year that I would use some of my scene work credits. I've got a membership to scene work and I very, rarely, very rarely use it. And I know Alex Judge has made the Orlando tea a few times and I really liked it. Very fit at tea is this one. Very short cap sleeves and then you've got the, you can see the scoop on there that I'm, I'm wearing here. So this is the one that I made first. And as you can see, I didn't have enough to go all the way around the um, neckline. So I just put a little join in there and it looks absolutely fine. So just very basic tees. It's got a bit of a curved hem, hem on it as this one. So I made it in that, that one old, old t-shirt and then this one was made from the Manetta dress uh, also by Scene Work which during Me Made May I made an effort to uh, wear a lot of the things that you know you, you just pass by <laughs> um, so I, I put the Manetta dress on and I thought it does nothing for me I, I, and I don't wear it so I just might as well upcycle the material it's really nice uh, soft I think it I think it's a viscose jersey is this that's a viscose jersey as well uh, and get a t-shirt out of it because a, a basic blue t-shirt is going to get a lot of wear as is a, a cream one so just bit good basics those two it is an easy pattern, relatively easy pattern. I think I made a size 8 actually. Yeah, I made a size 8 for those two. Uh, but yeah, just basic staples for my wardrobe. So finally, two last makes for the summer and you're looking at one right now and uh, this is the Stylark Asher dress. And uh, this is a, a pattern that we had in the shop that I walked past lots of times and thought, oh, I really like that, but never got around to making it. Uh, we um, had it in the larger size range. If you buy Stylark uh, already pre-printed, they do it in two size ranges and we only had it in the larger size range. So when Stylark had 20% off, I think it was, I snapped it up. And the fabric is from Minerva. I am an ambassador for Minerva. Uh, so this fabric's been given to me in exchange for a blog post, which I really need to get up online. Uh, made it a couple of months ago and I've made it a couple of times, I've worn it a couple of times. So you probably can't see from the photos, but you've got shading around the, the waistline here. And then just a nice, nicely gathered into the neckline. No bust starts again on this one. Um, and it's finished off with bias binding. Let me just turn it round. So can you see there? I've done a contrast bias binding to pull out the blue in the, in the, um, in the design. And then it's got a curved hem. It's got a really nice curved hem which again, I've gone with the bias binding underneath um, just to give it a, a pop of colour, as they say. <laughs> there is a, an option to add sleeves to this, uh, which are also shared, and I think that's a really, really nice design. I didn't want to add uh, sleeves on this one because I didn't. I thought that the fabric might be too much and it might be getting a bit uh, overwhelmed with the fabric. Fabric's absolutely gorgeous, by the way. Um, it is really nice, uh, nice weight. Uh, it's a, just a viscose was it a chalet or a twill? I can't remember. Um, but yeah, they're, they're a really nice quality viscose. You've just got the keyhole at the back again. So I've gone for easy makes, I think, this year. <laughs> uh, just got a keyhole fastening at the back. So it just slips over the top over your head. And there are no pockets in this one. And I keep reaching for pockets. So if I made it again, I might, I might put in pockets. Now for this one, I think I made a size 10. And I think I had to 
end up taking about an inch out of each side. So it does come up quite big. Mm. The problem with Stylark is if you buy online, you can buy all the pat all the um, sizes together, but it's more expensive. So being tight, <laughs> I just went for the size that I thought I was, which was uh, size 12. So they send you the size above and below, but they're separate files, so you can't grade into them. So like I say, I made the smaller size because my size had changed uh, in between times and I did still have to bring it in. So that's just just one heads up, one little heads up about um, Stylark. It's just a it's just a bit of a pain. Um, and then with the rest of it, I did I was sent three meters of this, but like I said, I didn't really want to do the sleeves. So I will make a sleeved version, but probably in a, a different, a, a less loud print. Um, I made the orchard top, which was a free pattern that Helen's closet brought out early earlier this year. Um, that again is another easy fitting one. <laughs> So here we have it, and this time I did make my own bias binding, and I've got photos to, I haven't got a lot of photos, but I've got some photos to insert. So again, it's just fitted across the bust and then just a line out, and there's a two dress length options with pockets available on this one, and the, um, the straps are made out of the same bias, so you just go all the way around with the straps, so quick heads up if you're going to make this is to pin your straps on and fit it first or even unstitch it on, baste it on before you, you fit it because I found I had to reduce this uh, strap length otherwise it'd fall off all the time, which is very, very annoying. Uh, yeah, so you've got your spaghetti straps, um, inseam pockets on the dress version. Um, you can do the bias binding in a contrast if you want. And they are suggesting woven fabrics for this one. So, you know, your, your cottons, linen, she's made linen versions with the dresses, which I think would be really nice. She's, she, she's suggesting that you could layer it up with a polo neck underneath uh, during the uh, autumn and winter months. Don't think I'd wear it like that, but, but anyway. But yeah, I've also done a few alterations during the summer. I've usually shied away from alterations and mending and that sort of thing. But I think during me made May, I realised that there were a lot of uh, clothes that, I wasn't reaching for, like I mentioned before. I upcycled the Moneta dress, but I found quite a few things that I either wanted altering, like T-shirts and things like that, did all those. But I'm not going to bore you with all the alterations at the moment. I think I'll, I'll leave it for, for now. I think I've gone on long enough. <laughs> so I will be back with an autumn or a, a, a second part of, of what I've made, uh, sort of late, late summer, early autumn. I won't be doing that next week, I don't think, because it's just taken me two hours to, <laughs> to put all this together. So so that's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. If you uh, haven't already subscribed, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. That will tell you when I've got new videos out. Uh, I'm just currently doing one or two a, a week at the moment, but uh, hopefully we'll get a bit more into the stride of things. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I shall speak to you later. Bye. Mm -hmm.